Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm starting to get used to saying that and I honestly, I love this platform so much already. I genuinely get excited to post on YouTube every week. I get excited putting polls on my Instagram story, asking what you guys want to see. Ugh, I just love you guys so freaking much. If you can't tell by the caption, we are doing a content creator tips and tech must-haves video. So without further ado, let's jump into it. You already know. I don't know what you put in this. It just puts me in such a good mood every time I have one. Cheers. I first just wanted to kind of explain a little bit about my content journey and where I'm at currently. It's been a journey. Once upon a time, my journey started on a little app called TikTok. I originally started a book talk account and that's how I started posting on TikTok, learning how to edit on the app and how the heck it works. So a lot of people don't know that, but I started with the book talk account in 2022. Yeah. 2022. It would do book hauls, book reviews, go to the bookstore with me, but I never showed my face. I was just like a little person behind the camera. I had always wanted to like post things about beauty and get ready with me's and things like that. So towards the end of 2022, I finally posted a get ready with me and it flopped hard, which is fine. That's fine. But it finally like gave me that little push that I needed to finally start posting what I wanted to post, which was beauty content. And I finally was like, okay, cool. We did it. Now we're done. Literally didn't post <laughs> for probably a few months until January of 2023 was when I finally was like, we're going to start this. We're going to actually see where this can go. I'm going to start posting a little bit more consistently and a little bit more beauty content, maybe dabble in some fashion. So that's what I did. I created a new account under my name, which was terrifying. Started posting get ready with me, started talking about mental health. If you don't know, I struggle with depression and anxiety. Hi, we're an anxious, depressed girly. So depressed I act like it's my birthday. If you know, you know. So started posting more consistently, started showing my personality a little bit more and started slowly gaining followers. Fast forward <laughs> to the end of 2023 going into this year, I had a video go viral. It was a closing shift video. I was cleaning. I did my little app of the headphones. The music started and it popped off. Like, I think it got like 1.5 million views, which brought in a ton of new followers, which brings me to where I'm at now, which is roughly 45,000. It's been a journey. I'm on the road to 50K, which is insane. If you had asked me last year at this time, I would be like, yeah, freaking right. Like, there's no way that's gonna happen. So all that to say, like, it did take me some time. So I'm just gonna go through some of the tips and tricks that I have learned along the way in the past year and a half that I hope can help some of you who maybe are struggling to continue that motivation to post. First tip be authentic be freaking authentic and post things that are exciting to you if you're posting things that you think are gonna go viral because you saw so and so do the same thing that's just not gonna happen if you want to be a beauty influencer or post about your amazon finds do it i think one of the most crucial things that have helped early on and continue to still help to this day is having your email address in your bio I cannot tell you how important this is because if a brand sees a video of yours and they're like, huh, I wanna reach out to this person, how are they gonna do that? They're gonna look for an email address. So have an email in your bio and have an email address strictly for content creation. Another very simple thing that I think everyone should be doing 
tag brands in your video. If you're doing a morning routine video and you show your skincare lineup or your makeup that you're using for the day, tag those brands. It's gonna pop up on their notifications page. Maybe they go over to the video, they like the content that you're creating, they wanna reach out to you for a potential collaboration. What are they gonna look for? They're gonna look for an email address, I guarantee you. So tag brands in your videos and have that email, please. Please, for the love of all things. Another thing that has that helped me really early on was signing up for apps and different websites that have collaborations integrated into them. For example, I think Skeepers is a really great app to use if you wanna start building your portfolio. There's some really great brands on there. Basically, Skeepers works with different brands. Those brands post collaboration opportunities. You apply to them. It can be Instagram, it can be TikTok, or there's also text reviews where you can apply for the product, they'll ship it out to you and you just type up a review. Skeepers was a really big one that I used early on and really helped me kind of build my portfolio to working with bigger brands. I'm just gonna list off a couple of others, but Incense is a good one. Join Brands is another good one that has UGC opportunities, social posts, and also text reviews. Coley is a good one that I've used personally for paid collaborations. All of these you have to apply to, just FYI. Aspire IQ has a lot of different brands on it as well. I get Lancome PR sent to me very frequently. That is through Aspire IQ. I believe Urban Decay was also on Aspire IQ. So just a ton of really big brands. Buttermilk is another really big one. I've had the opportunity to work with Estee Lauder, Armani Beauty, all through the Buttermilk platform. Another one that I've also had success with is Shopify Collabs. Sometimes it'll just be something where you can request a gift, they'll send you a free product and then give you a discount code. Those are some of the platforms that I've personally used and have had success with for either gifted and paid collabs. Another underrated thing that I have had success with is pitching brands on Instagram. Have a template of introducing yourself, what your niche is, what platforms you use, and why you want to work with that brand, and send your social profiles over to them. Shoot your shot, like, what do you have to lose? If you guys want a template, I'm more than happy to share things that I've sent in the past that have been successful, so let me know. Two other platforms that I signed up for early on that I still to this day use religiously is an Amazon Associates account and a Like to Know It creator account. Amazon Associates basically is where you create an Amazon storefront. You can make different idea lists or folders based on things that you have purchased that you showcase in videos or photos. Same with Like to Know It. They don't work with every brand, but they do have a lot of partnerships with brands like Skims, where you can post a photo, tag the exact item, and get commission from those links. Well, those are some really good ways that I think can help kind of monetize your social media in a little bit more of an organic way. I've had some good success with it. So again, if you if you have questions, I'm more than happy to like dive more into those. 10 out of 10 recommend having one of those platforms, if not both. Last but not least, I cannot recommend having a media kit enough. A media kit is basically like your social media resume. You have like a little blurb about you, your niche, what kind of style of content you create, as well as analytics from the platforms that you use. So like your follower count, engagement rate, and then you also have your rates on it. So it's a TikTok video, an Instagram reel, Instagram stories, UGC video, which is user generated content that you're not posting onto your social media account. It's strictly for the brand to use for advertising. I include usage rights on mine. Those are the big things. 10 out of 10 recommend having a media kit and it's a super good way to kind of snapshot you and your resume. That kind of wraps up my content creator tips. I would not recommend them if I have not used them myself. I have done every single one of the things that I have listed. A couple of things on top of those I would say is engage with your audience. If people are commenting on your video, I don't care if it's one person, I don't care if it's a hundred people, 
interact with your audience because that is going to gain the buy-in from your followers. I just can't emphasize the importance enough of fostering a community on your social media platforms because that is what's going to drive more engagement for you. So engage with your audience, be authentic, and just foster that sense of community. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Moving on to my tech must-haves. Now, I just want to preface by saying I don't want anyone seeing this to be like, okay, I got to go run to Amazon, run to Best Buy, and spend a bunch of money on equipment. Honestly, my tech must-have list is pretty small. I didn't spend a ton of money on a extravagant setup. If you want to do that, you do that. If you have the money to do that, invest in yourself by all means. I'm just saying you can really have a budget friendly setup and still see some really great success. Let's start off with the thing that I think is probably the most important, a good tripod. I have gone through two tripods in my now year and a half of content creating. And this tripod that I'm using currently is amazing. I can't say enough good things about it. It's portable, it extends. This tripod can have my hold my camera on top of it, but it also has this extension for my phone. I love having universal products that I can use for my phone if I'm filming on my camera. It makes it way easier. It also comes with a little remote. It hooks up via Bluetooth. The tripod I use is from Amazon. It can extend up to 62 inches. It is currently on sale for $22.99. It's truly just everything I need. I absolutely love it. Can't recommend enough. I will link everything that I mention in the description box of this video. If you choose to shop through me, thank you so much for supporting me and this channel. I cannot thank you enough. Next on my list is an OctoBuddy or a Casemate. It has little suction cups on the back. So if I want to film, I can literally stick it to a surface and it just stays. It's incredible. I have an OctoBuddy on one of my cases. What I don't love about that is it's adhesive. So it sticks to the case and it stays on. What I love about this Casemate is that it is magnetic. So if you have a MagSafe phone, you can just literally plop it on and take it right off. But it's still super strong and holds my phone as you guys saw on my mirror. Definitely recommend an OctoBuddy or this Casemate. I recently started my YouTube journey and my very first video I filmed on my iPhone. I literally used my back camera, had it on my tripod, and then I finally said, you know what, I'm running out of space on my phone and I, really want to take YouTube serious. So I purchased a vlog digital camera. I used my phone for the longest time on TikTok and I still use my phone to film for TikToks. But for YouTube, I just wanted something that had a little bit more high quality. I also wanted something to where I can take still photos. So I splurged on the Sony ZV-1. I will say a couple of cons about the camera are one, there is no flash. I feel like that's okay for me because I film majority of my content during the day or inside to where I can turn on a light. Number two, the battery life is all right. So I purchased a pack of batteries on Amazon. I always have a backup battery if I'm out and about and I'm filming a vlog, I can just quickly swap them. I feel like that's really the only two cons. I absolutely love it. The quality is insane. I am not super knowledgeable in cameras. So I love that this one has an auto setting which focuses and has the backlighting and everything automatically so I don't have to like mess with any settings because I took photo in high school but like I'm not a camera queen so I love that this is a good beginner camera and super user friendly easy to use 10 out of 10 now I love my tripod I love her so much but I wanted a tripod that I can use a little bit easier on the go so I got this guy I used this when I was in Florida, when I was filming for my vlog. I screwed the camera in at the top here and it made it super easy to kind of have 
a little bit more of a stable hand when I was filming out and about. You can also add your phone attachment to the top, so also another little hack. Next is going to be no surprise because it was quite the craze for a while, but with good reason. I mentioned my camera does not have a flash, so I personally use this light if I ever need some additional lighting. It's rechargeable, which I love. It can go on the back of your phone. If you're taking photos somewhere and you need lighting, it's incredible. It went viral for a reason. $31.99 for this bad boy. I've had it for over a year and it still works so well. So 10 out of 10, recommend. Quick snack break because your girl was feeling lightheaded. Back to regularly scheduled programming. The last two items on my tech must-haves are not necessarily items, but applications that I use very, very regularly. I mentioned before creating a media kit, also known as kind of your social media resume. And the best templates that I have been able to find on something called Canva. They have an app, they also have just a website. I usually just edit it on my computer. I'm constantly updating my media kit because my follower counts and my analytics change. I also use it for things on YouTube. I create my YouTube thumbnails on Canva. I've also created my professional resume on Canva. So 10 out of 10, can't recommend it enough. You can use it for free or you can upgrade with a subscription. Final application that I use religiously every single day is CapCut. CapCut is what I use for my editing tool. I edit my TikToks on it, I edit my Instagram reels, I edit my YouTube videos, and personally I find that it's user friendly. I upgraded to the Pro version because some of the features that I use are only from the Pro version. I want to say it's like seven to eight ninety nine per month, somewhere in that range. I add sound effects in it. You can add like transitions. It is so easy to use. You don't lose any kind of quality from it. I love it so much. It's my holy grail. I'm obsessed with it. Like I said, I really don't use anything crazy for my videos. The camera is definitely the biggest investment that I've made to date but I love it and I've already gotten so much use out of it. Start small and as you continue and grow in your social media journey and you decide to invest in yourself, start then. But you don't have to break the bank to make good videos. You really don't. I hope this helped. I guess to wrap everything up, do not give up. Trust in your ability. If it is something that you're truly passionate about, the success will come in due time. I promise you. Sometimes it's a slow build and that's okay. That is your journey. One thing that I know is said so constantly is to post consistently, but truly be consistent with it. When I first started, I posted one video and then went MIA for months and I really didn't see any growth from it. So keep at it. I know it's a grind. Burnout is so real. So take your time with it, invest what you can into it and the rest will come, I promise. I'm cheering for you, okay? I'm your number one fan. You got this. That about concludes this video. If you made it to the end, thank you so, so much for watching. I love you from the bottom of my heart. You're an angel. You're perfect. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.